Hey, what's up YouTubers? Welcome back for part two of my Intercontinental uh, Championship tribute to the late, great uh, Pat Patterson. If you guys uh, saw the previous video, uh, please go and like and subscribe to me. Uh, comment below. You know all the jazz that you've got to do with that. Uh, so moving on to uh, part two. Uh, this championship is going to be the next replica championship that I own. Uh, now, when we were going into uh, WrestleMania uh, 14 in 1998, this championship was still around, okay? Uh, but the night after WrestleMania 14, this championship temporarily faded away and became something different it became sort of like an attitude era difference that's right the next replica that i have is the wwf attitude era intercontinental championship absolutely love this design of the Inter intercontinental championship this was my second replica that i actually uh, purchased and man what a purchase it was absolutely beautiful now as i say uh, this came around on the Monday Night Raw the night after uh, WrestleMania 14 uh, and it, The Rock was the current uh, Intercontinental Champion it was brought on TV and uh, the original one uh, was actually a block logo uh, as we all know the WWF WWE was going through a logo change at the time uh, and when this design went to the manufacturers, it was the block logo that went to press, okay? Uh, the Attitude Era Scratch logo didn't come around until October uh, 99, when China uh, beat uh, Jeff Jarrett for their Cardinal Championship. So the block logo had a whole, oof, well over a year, uh, in play uh, before it changed uh, logo designs uh, which was which was crazy but that was not unlike the WWF WWE as many uh, people know uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin got the big eagle with the uh, classic uh, blue block logo and we all know uh, the tag team championships uh, logo design changed multiple times during that era uh, but let's get into what we're all about here. It is, of course, the attitude there about. Now, little change here. We are going to go smack down. See what I did there? Smack down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little pun there. Sorry. Uh, so we've got the WWF logo here. Scratch logo. This is really, really nice. I really, really like this. Uh, I have held... The E version, uh, which would be version, I want to say version 4 slash 3 or 3 slash 4. Uh, and the logo is really thick on that as well. Uh, on this one, you can't get your finger as deep into uh, into the logo as you can on the E one. Uh, so the plate is a lot flatter on these uh, first uh, go around with the, with the championships. Uh, lovely, lovely red on the scratch. I really like that. Uh, we have the iconic blue globe. Uh, man, what a size for a globe this is. Uh, this is massive. Uh, wow, really, really nice. Uh, I say wow because I get in awe every time I look at my championships just because of the history of the belts. Uh, and then as we go further out the globe, there is sort of like a ring effect going all the way around it. 
almost as if to say it protects it. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, on the updated E version, these are a lot thicker as well. Uh, and we have a uh, sort of the similar idea to the classic where we have uh, gold and a uh, black ribbon. Uh, but this time it is just a pure gold ribbon right under the globe. And it has intercontinental all the way along there. Really, really nice. So intercontinental, like the previous version, stands out. And then underneath that, you don't have heavyweight, you just have basic champion. Now on the E version, uh, the E version had a nameplate here and then intercontinental champion was sort of squished together into the ribbon, which in my personal opinion, didn't really go. Uh, I thought it was just kind of really crushed together. Uh, I would really like to have an e-version here to do comparison, but I don't unfortunately. Uh, if anybody wants to let me have it to clean, <laughs> I promise you'll get it back. I will quite happily do a review and a clean for you. Uh, and then above the globe, you have World Wrestling Federation. Not Entertainment, Federation. WWF guy here. I'm sure I've said that before. WWF guy. Uh, World Wrestling Federation. Really, really nice. I really like this. Uh, you can get your fingers into this a lot more than what you could uh, than what you could Intercontinental. Uh, you can get on Champion. Just it's not as thick. Uh, I will do a comparison of plates in a few minutes, so please bear with me. Uh, above this, uh, World Wrestling Federation, uh, I love saying that, uh, they kept, if you guys remember the stars, the six stars that they had on the classic, they sort of kept that idea, but instead of stars, they use uh, diamonds, which is really cool, really nice, I, I like that idea. Uh, and then... Going around the main plate itself, uh, the oval shape uh, of the plate, uh, the, the ring effect is going all the way around, so it's like as if to say it's protecting the main plate as well, which I really like. Uh, like I say, on the E version, it does stand out uh, a lot more, but if you look at the main plate itself, it's not as thick. Uh, these were done in two, from 2000 going into 2001 that these were made, right? Uh, and the plates are not as thick as what they once were. Uh, Hazard F5 has went more into depth about the plates. Uh, so he is your best person to uh, ask questions about the difference in the plates. Uh, but if you... Look at the difference, okay? I mean, I don't need to hold it that close to the camera. You guys, I'm sure, can actually see the difference in the plates, how this is very, very flat, and this looks like it's very thicker, you know? Uh, now, on the E version, it is thicker. Uh, it's almost, I think, is the same thickness as this. Uh, on the up-to-date version, anyway. Uh, not the first batch. Uh, that was released several years ago, but the most recent uh, E version, uh, which I might get, <laughs> I might get, uh, if I'm allowed. Uh, now, if we go into uh, side plates uh, two and three, you have uh, you have aspects of the globe. Okay, so you have Europe and you have Africa. Then you have Europe and Africa here and a nice uh, blue for the sea. Then you have Asia and Australia on this one. Nice bit of a uh, of the sea. You can make out Australia and you can just make out uh, Asia. Uh, but what these side plates have on it as well, and I have actually missed <laughs> on the main plate, uh, is a sort of 
dagger, I want to say dagger effect, it's probably a sun effect, uh, but they sort of just come out on either side of the globe, you know, uh, and uh, as I forgot to mention on the E version, these are a lot thicker. Now, going back to the plate, the side plates, the same effect is on the side plates, but these are a lot wider. Uh, you can get your finger down the middle part of them. Now, like the main plate, there is the ring effect going all the way around the rectangle of the side plates. Sort of like it protects it. Uh, and on side plates 4 and 5, same idea where you have the ring effect going all the way around the plates. Then you have North America, South America, and uh, you have the, the sea, and then you have America and South America with the globe there. And then you have Antarctic, or Antarctica. <laughs> Easy for me to say, it's really not. <laughs> you have that smack down in the middle there, with the sea around it, and then you have the WWF logo uh, above that. And if I bring the plates to the camera, you'll get a much, much better look at them. I will be putting up photos like I always do, so you can get a closer look at the championship lovely uh, now if we go excuse me on the back of it authentic WWF flashy with 2001 as World Wrestling Federation Entertainment Inc they do not make them like that anymore <laughs> World Wrestling Federation Entertainment Inc if they stuck to that, they might have still been in business, uh, being World Wrestling Federation. Who knows, if they stuck to Titan Sports, they might not have needed to have a name change. But, <laughs> hey ho. Uh, now, yes, there is signatures on this. Now, I will get into them. Uh, when I purchased this belt off of eBay, when eBay was safe to buy belts from uh, there I got it and uh, the person that had it before me must have gotten it done in early 2005 I want to say the 2005 European tour Be the reason why I say that is because it has Chris Benoit's signature and it has Eddie Guerrero's signature on it and uh, as we all know we uh, lost uh, Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero in the early noughties so uh, early to late noughties uh, so yeah this must have been done on that tour because uh, as we all know like I say, uh, we tragically lost uh, Eddie Guerrero in the uh, in the winter of uh, two thousand five. So, and thankfully they have not gone; they have not faded. That, like I say, this must have been done in two thousand five, and they are still standing now in twenty twenty one. And then I also have Randy Orton, Chris Jericho with Y two J signature, and Shelton Benjamin. Now, they must have been at the meet and greet as well, uh, which is really, really cool. Really, really nice to have five champions sign this. Uh, I really like this. This is really, lo really lovely. Uh, now, you'd think the big ego would be my... Uh, my go-to championship, my pride and joy, right? My number one belt? No, it's this, just because of the signatures. I have actually been uh, been offered uh, money <laughs> for this belt, just for the signatures, but I have turned it down many, many times uh, because I know for a fact I would never get this belt in the same way again. Uh, so I'm not saying I wouldn't get another version of it. I just mean 
that I know for a fact I definitely wouldn't get this back. Uh, so this is never this is never leaving me. Uh, I might possibly get a purple strap made. Uh, I've been pondering that for years. Uh, and when I say get a purple strap, because when this originally came on TV, uh, it did have a purple strap. Uh, so I have contemplated getting one uh, to change straps every so often. Uh, but anybody that knows anything about this design, uh, this has had some historical battles as well uh, with uh, The Rock and Triple H in a wire match at SummerSlam 98. And we all know about China being the first ever uh, female Intercontinental Champion uh, history. Uh, and strong champions to hold this version of the belt has uh, been the likes of Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, Edge, Rob Van Dam. Uh, we go into the E version of the belt. We have Randy Orton. Uh, Drew McIntyre, first ever Scottish guy to win the Intercontinental Championship. Dolph Ziggler, The Miz, uh, Luke Harper, uh, Umaga, just to name but a few. You know, uh, man, many, many, many champions there. Uh, crazy how many champions there has been. Uh, now, when Cody Rhodes won the championship uh, from Ezekiel Jackson, uh, he chose to not want this version anymore. He actually asked management if he could go classic. And when he went classic, he reintroduced this version of the championship which was really cool uh when he first reintroduced it it sort of had like a nugget effect all the way around the plates and then as time went on it went back to the original flatness uh and as we all know uh it was the historical gold and a uh, uh, white strap championship that it became uh and when I say strong champions, uh, like I say for strong champions uh, that held this championship overall, as we know in uh, 2014, when Mr. Part-Timer, uh, Brock Lesnar, uh, was the WWF WWE champion at the time, but he was not on TV and uh, the Intercontinental Champion was the main man of the company. Uh, and that was Luke Harper and Dolph Ziggler when they were having historical matches for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, which has never happened again. <laughs> uh, the mid-card champion has never been the man uh, again. Uh, in fact, I take that back. Uh, whoever's been US champion, that has happened to. Uh, and whoever has been Intercontinental Champion, I'm correcting myself here. I do apologise. Uh, like I said in the previous video, uh, a lot of stuff I might get wrong, a lot of stuff I will get right, uh, so it has happened again. Whenever Brock Lesnar was champion, uh, whether it be the WWF WWE Championship or the World Universal Championship, uh, and he became, and he was Mr. Part-Timer, it was always the mid-card guy that was the main uh, guy for the show, uh, whether it be Raw or SmackDown. Uh, so these evolved, okay? So this went back to this, and then, as we all know, quite recently, in fact, last year, we got an update. What do you guys think of the update? It is on the screen right now. What do you guys think? Uh, I'm in the middle about it. I am in completely the middle about it. I like it and I don't like it. Uh, 
in my personal opinion, I don't think it should all be black and gold. I think there should be some blue in there, especially in the globe part and where the logo is. Uh, I mean, there's been many fan arts going around uh, when it first came out that they should have stuck to a white strap and had the gold and blue. That might have made, that would have made sense for me. Uh, you know, totally would have made sense to me, uh, big time. Uh, so, I'm going to uh, give you some match recommendations. So please bear with me. Uh, these are the championships to uh, go and watch on YouTube, uh, the WWF WWE Network. Uh, if you want to go and watch some classic Intercontinental Championship matches. Uh, number one, Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat, uh, WrestleMania 3 for the Intercontinental Championship. All I'm going to say is, no spoilers, go and watch it. And you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Uh, match number two, I've previously mentioned that uh, the main event of WrestleMania 6, uh, where Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior, Champion versus Champion, the Ultimate Challenge, the Intercontinental Championship was on the line, the WWF WWE Championship was on the line. Go and watch it. No spoilers, just go and watch it. Great match. Uh, match number three, this is going to be a tie. It is a tie between uh, with Bret the Hitman Hart. And he had two historical Intercontinental Championship matches in uh, night two. WrestleMania 8 versus Roddy Piper. And then at SummerSlam 92 at Wembley Stadium against Davey Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. And that match was a main event. Or was the main event, sorry, I apologise. Uh, so go and watch that. No spoilers for that either. Two great matches. Amazing. Uh, Match number four, uh, of course, WrestleMania 10 with a ladder match with uh, Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon, aka Scott Hall. Uh, no spoilers again, amazing match. Go and watch it uh, if you haven't already. Uh, and uh, here is a really cool match uh, to go and look out for. Is uh, Kofi Kingston versus Chris Jericho, a Knight of Champions uh, in 2008. That was when uh, Kofi Kingston sort of got given the ball to run with the Intercontinental Championship and uh, he knocked out of the park, in my opinion. Uh, so go and watch that one. And a little personal fan favourite of mine is, like I've said, uh, the day Drew McIntyre became the Intercontinental Champion uh, at TLC 2009. Go and watch the famous Scotsman become the first ever Scots Intercontinental Champion. Uh, in my opinion, a really great match. Uh, so guys, thank you for watching uh, my tribute to the WWF WWE Hall of Famer, uh, Pat Patterson, uh, the very first Intercontinental Champion. Uh, I hope this has been fun for you. I hope I've given you some fun details. Uh, uh, like I say, go back and watch the uh, previous video for part one if you want to see uh, more of this in all its glory. Uh, and thank you for watching this part two uh, segment. And as I always say, guys, take care of yourselves, stay safe, stay awesome, and good journey, guys.